Hi, welcome to our YouTube channel where we discuss about various professional exam questions of various years of MBBS. Uh, I am Dr. Chutimay Maji and I have done my MBBS from Bankura Shambhilani Medical College and Hospital. So, today's topic is granuloma versus granulation tissue. This is the most common question in, uh, um, in our professional exams and it is also a cause of very much confusion among students. So granuloma and granulation tissue both are both are uh, part uh, both are the result of inflammatory processes. So what are the purposes of granuloma formation and what are the purposes of granulation tissue formation? So the purpose of granuloma formation is to uh, <clears throat> secure any area from uh, any chronic inf chronic infection or any uh, foreign body or any autoimmune reaction to contain some inflammation into an area. So that's why granuloma is formed to contain something into an area. And why granulation tissue is formed? Granulation tissue is formed to um, to heal a wound, it is a process of wound healing. It is one actually one of the steps of wound healing. There are various uh, five six steps of wound healing, and granulation tissue formation is one of the concrete steps of scar formation or healing. So, what are the causes of granuloma formation? Granuloma formation causes you know infectious cause most common is TB. You know about this uh, TB caseating granuloma. There are autoimmune causes like sarcoidosis, there are uh, foreign body granulomas and there are infectious diseases as you, as you know TB uh, and also pioneuritic leprosy. There is other things like histoplasmosis, cat scratch disease, there is blastomycosis. These are all sorts of granuloma. Uh, there are all sorts, of, all sorts of diseases where you can find granuloma. So, what are the main cells in a, <coughs> in a granuloma? The main cells in a granuloma is macrophage, T lymphocyte, and epithelioid cell, and epithelioid cell, and also giant cell. The common misconception is giant cell is the main cell of granuloma, but not, uh, but it is not true. The main cell is epithelioid cell, more than more than macrophage. The most important cell is epithelioid cell and macrophage, <coughs> and T lymphocyte is also one of the main cells. And the mediator of this kind of infl inflammatory process is interferon gamma, most uh, important, and interleukin 2 then, and other things as interleukin 4, 5, etc. And the main cells in, uh, uh, in granulation tissue formation is macrophage, fibroblast. Fibroblast is one of the most important cells, leaky endothelial <coughs> cells, and connective tissue proteins. So why the name is granulation tissue? Because uh, it is, uh, if you uh, see grossly, the cross appearance is quite like pink, soft, exact these words, pink, soft and granular, pink, soft and granular. That's why it is named as granulation tissue. So let's see the process of granuloma formation. <clears throat> So, whenever some infection occurs, chronic infection or uh, any foreign body comes, the uh, when uh, neutrophils etc. fails, so macrophages come, macrophages uh, are activated, macrophages capture this antigen and, uh, and then they are obviously activated, they are activated, then they release the interferon gamma, this is the central uh, mediator of this, uh, of this whole process, uh, cytokine uh, interferon gamma, so interferon gamma <coughs> Uh, activates TH2 helper T cells and these helper T cells helper uh, T, uh, T cells then uh, secret interferon gamma and interleukin 2 again. So this interleukin 2 activates uh, T, more T cells and interferon gamma again activates more and more macrophages and uh, also T cells. So this kind of forms uh, a chain reaction, a chain reaction. So this chain reaction results in more macrophage formation and these macrophages then uh, turn into something called, so what is an epithelioid cell? Epithelioid cell, the name suggests that it looks like epithelial cell. Yeah, it actually looks like an epithelial cell, like this. But it is not an epithelial cell at, as it, it has no, it has no basement membrane. But an epithelial cell has a basement membrane. So, but in granuloma, the epithelioid cells are uh, quite similar in shape and size, but they <coughs> have no basement membrane. So, some of these epithelioids, epithelioid cells merge and they form multinucleated giant cell, multinucleated giant cell. Now, after some time, I'll show you the schematic diagrams and granulomas are surrounded in the very, very, very most commonly surrounded by lymphocytes usually, but in sarcoidosis, there is no this no collar lymphocytes 
so that is why sarcoidosis granuloma is called naked granuloma most important cell in uh, a granuloma is epithelioid cell more than macrophages <coughs> this is the schematic diagram of a granuloma pardon me for my bad diagram uh, so this is uh, the the these are the epithelioid cells in the middle and here caseous materials may be present i will tell about caseous material these are epithelioid cells and uh, you know, uh, around them there are a few giant cells these are few giant cells which has huge cytoplasm and multiple nuclei <coughs> and in the collar region and in the very periphery there is lymphocytes the collar region this contains lymphocytes now what are the types of granuloma what are the types of granuloma immune granulomas and uh, non immune granulomas immune gran granulomas you know about tb leprosy uh, you know about cat scratch disease which is caused by which bacteria bartonella henselii bartonella henselii and this uh, granuloma has a typical name that is stilet granuloma this granuloma has a uh, typical name that is stilet, stilet granuloma another infection toxoplasmosis sarcoidosis i have said about it sarcoidosis is autoimmune uh, disease it is a uh, uh, it is called naked granuloma typical name and uh, uh, other uh, fungal infections like histoplasmosis blastomycosis those are immune uh, granulomas non immune granulomas are occupational lung disease like silicosis some uh, asbestosis and uh, foreign body granulomas the uh, so spelling mistake foreign body granuloma uh, it is called refractile granuloma refractile granuloma another uh, classification of granuloma is about necrosis is uh, regarding necrosis so some uh, some granulomas contain central necrosis central cheesy material central cheesy eosinophilic, eosinophilic material which is uh, eosinophilic material which is amorphous in density which is amorphous in, in density <clears throat> and some are non cassette so which are the which is the typical example that is tp most commonly histoplasmosis and pure neuritic leprosis in these cases you can see central necrosed area that is cassiating granuloma non cassiating granuloma causes are sarcoidosis sarcoidosis uh, here uh, there is no cassiation central uh, hodgkin's disease it is a kind of a lymphoma and some tb granulomas uh, can be non cassiating also uh, there is a fact hikuchi's lymphadenitis hikuchi's lymphadenitis uh, it is uh, histiocytic necrotizing lymphadenitis it is a lymph node disease so schematic diagram of a tb granuloma tb lymphadenopathy tb lymphadenitis uh, here this uh, this pinkish region this is called um, caseous material so this is amorphous granular eosinophilic debritic material and around this area this area this um, this uh, mild pinkish area this is called epithelioid epithelioid cells these are epithelioid cells <clears throat> and this is a huge uh, cytoplasm you can see this uh, huge uh, gap this is cytoplasm and the multiple nucleoli mu nucleus multiple nucleus this is langhanstein cell and collar of lymphocytes around this chote chote cells blue blue cells these are uh, collar lymphocytes so uh, this is uh, a uh, <clears throat> comparison between cassiating granuloma of tb and non cassiating granuloma of sarcoidosis in sarcoidosis there is no central cassiation uh, this is a main difference there you can see here nuclei nucleus containing materials uh, cells are present but here no nucleus in the center so this is cassius this is non cassius and in case of sarcoidosis there is no um, collar like uh, collar like uh, ring of lymph lymphocytes so this is why it is called another uh, thing uh, catchy question that is cat scratch disease stilet granuloma cat scratch disease caused ca caused by bartonella henselii <clears throat> and uh, it is uh, grossly it looks like a stilet shepherd uh, so that's why it is called stilet granuloma and uh, if you see uh, you if you dig deep uh, microscopically um, in uh, in high power you can see these areas these are these are the uh, <coughs> giant cells and around this these are the neutro chote chote neutrophils these are different these are the giant cells these are the giant cells the multinucleated cells okay and another thing foreign body granuloma foreign body granuloma the term i have told about refractile granuloma refractile granuloma why it is called refractile Refra what is refractile which is which uh, which glitters which glitters so uh, it is refractile under 
polarized light. This foreign material which is present at the center of this granuloma is refractile under polarized light. So what are the causes? Suture, suture region, suture material is the cause, graft material and talc associated with inter IV drug abuse. So uh, two three types of uh, Lang uh, two three types of giant cells we should know about. This is Langhans giant cell. This is Langhans giant cell. Uh, it has uh, in the nucleuses you can see is uh, are arranged in uh, horseshoe shape. So that's why it is called horseshoe shape uh, giant cell Langhans giant cell. And uh, another you, you can uh, you, uh, you have to uh, be careful about what Langerhans cell versus Langhans cell. Langerhans cell is different. Langerhans cell is not a part of granuloma. It is a dendritic cell. It is an antigen presenting cell. Langerhans cell is present in skin etc. Langerhans cell histiocytosis. It is it causes Langerhans cell histiocytosis and it is dendritic cell. It is a part of uh, or immune system and it is dendritic cell it is antigen presenting cell and tau tangent cell uh, here you can see the necklace pattern uh, nucle nucleus nucleus are arranged in uh, ne necklace pattern it is seen in xanthoma seen in xanthoma reed sternberg cell reed sternberg cell rs cell is a tumor giant cell is a tumor giant cell at last i have uh, mm, arranged this peak of a uh, picture from province this is a uh, um, <clears throat> Trichome, trichome stand uh, um, granulation tissue um, slide. This this blue bluish this bluish color is due to collagen. Collagen is stained blue, uh, royal blue um, by trichome stain. These are endotheliums. These are endotheliums, and this is a huge uh, collagen deposit by in granulation tissue due to fibroblast accumulation. So at last, this is the uh, schematic diagram of a granulation tissue. So where granulation tissue can be found in uh, healing ulcers, you can find uh, in you can find uh, granulation tissue at the edge of the ulcer. You can find some neutrophils, and in the base you will find penicillin plasma cells, macrophages, and uh, these are the macrophages you can find. And you can see there are numerous there are numerous endothelial cells. Your numerous endothelial cells and the fact is these endothelial cells are leaky so they um, leak uh, these uh, these blood vessels leak very mu uh, much much proteins and these proteins collagens are deposited in this uh, extracellular matrix extracellular matrix and here fibroblasts also accumulate fibroblasts also accumulate so that's why uh, that's why granulation tissue formed so when you see granulation tissue in an ulcer bed etc you have to assume that that ulcer is healing so granulation tissue starts forming in day 3 and maximally it is formed around day 5 around day 5 okay so this is the difference between granuloma and granulation tissue and what are the mediators what are the mediators of granulation tissue formation that is vgf vascular endothelial growth factor fgf2 fibroblast growth factor 2 and uh, tgf beta tgf beta is very much important uh, for fibrosis for, for fibrosis formation tgf beta 2 so uh, and uh, matrix metalloproteinases matrix metal matrix metalloproteinases actually builds and unbuilds those um, in the whole process actually the um, the uh, aim of granulation tissue uh, the when granulation tissue is formed uh, or the uh, aim of healing is always building and unbuilding that uh, actually <clears throat> First collagen is de deposited, then second round of collagen deposition occurs, then again destruction occurs, then uh, third round occurs. That's how you can get a uh, rough primary structure. Thank you. This topic is over. If you want to hear uh, more from us, you uh, comment uh, below. Uh, you uh, suggest us about which question we discuss, we should discuss next. Thank you from us.